I'll start with Jed first. Um, I guess after a defeat like that, in that sort of fashion last week, how do you go about kind of recentering and refocusing for what's going to be a tough test on Saturday at Eden Park? Uh, yeah, we just got to lick our wounds and go again. Um, yeah, there's no lack of motivation after the weekend. Obviously, you know, it was a really, it was a great test match to be a part of. Um, yeah, it was awesome being out there, but obviously disappointing ending. But uh, yeah, we, there's no lack of motivation in the squad and um, the boys have recovered and, you know, we've had two really, really good solid uh, training days. So we're, we're pumped to get over to New Zealand and, and get out there and rip in again. So coming back, I think it was 31-13 down at some point to give yourself a chance to win at the end there. Is there a sense of sort of motivation, not motivation, uh, momentum you can kind of take into that, to take into Saturday and hopefully kind of harness heading forward? Yeah, there's a whole lot of, as I said, uh, motivation. And we saw that, you know, what we did was really working. And once we got 15 men on the park, uh, you know, we were getting good pay out of our strikes, our set piece, and um, you know the things we wanted to achieve in that test match. And uh, we got to be better to close out that game, and and we've taken that learning, and uh, we're ready to go. So just touching on that, I think it was three yellow cards during that match. There's been sort of a couple of issues in the past with discipline. How how much importance is kind of discipline been been placed on this week, and particularly heading into heading into sort of the future? Yeah, I mean, if you're giving away, I think we gave away 19 advantages and I think there was 13 penalties. You know, you're going to put yourself in a hard position and the refs, you know, forced to make those those things like yellow cards. Um, you know, Jake got caught in an uncompromising position at the bottom of a mall and uh, the other two sort of speak for himself. So, um, yeah, we've got to be better there and uh, we will be. Yeah, Jake. Um... I to just tell us, what's the feeling like heading to Eden Park? Is it is it one of excitement, or, or what is it? So, yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I think uh, oh, it's obviously a great place to play um, at Eden Park, and against uh, the All Blacks is a great occasion. Uh, like Jed touched on, uh, we're really excited for the week ahead. Um, obviously, pretty disappointed with the way things ended last week in Melbourne, but. Uh, We've had a really good training week and we're excited for what will be a great test match. Obviously, um, you look at, you know, from England, the first test, some of the leaders that were a part of that um, that team. And now it's obviously it's a pretty different team to what it was three months ago. But you're very much a leader within that team, captain of the Tars. What's some of the messaging that's taking place from those kind of guys and figures within the team? in what is, you know, the Bledisloe might be gone, but it's a huge test still. Yeah, I think, uh, well, luckily enough, we've got a really strong leadership group here. Um, and yeah, we've got guys like Jed with a lot of uh, with a lot of experience, Slips, Al, um, you know, Kelly spent some time overseas and, and learned a lot. Um, so we have a luxury there that we have guys, even like Tate, Whitey and myself, have all captained their local teams. Um, so I, I wouldn't say we're short on experience, uh, but the best, uh, best players in the country in this team. So for majority, a lot of guys with a lot of experience. So the message has been pretty simple. Do a lot of the same, uh, like Jed touched on. Uh, but yeah, probably discipline's been a massive work on throughout the week. Like like we've spoken about before, three yellow cards probably isn't the best. And when we have 15 guys on the park, we look really good. So I guess limiting the amount of uh, penalties we give them uh, will definitely help us on the weekend. And just from your personal perspective, um, starting at nine, always difficult and I suppose probably different starting test matches they're always tighter um, you know it's probably easier to look a million bucks coming on and two minutes to go when the game's a bit looser but from your perspective what are the real differences from starting a, a test match uh, yeah well I haven't started a heap of test matches so uh, look my aim for the week coming in was to sort of get my core job right it's my kick and pass um, which is really my main focus. Uh, we got quite a bit of pay through kicking, uh, and I think in parts of the game, we looked pretty quick with the ball, especially in the last 20. I thought Whitey did a really good job of picking up the tempo. Um, but yeah, I think probably, especially at this level, you've got such quality across the park, it's, you've really got to focus on yourself and getting your co core job right, and the rest kind of take care, takes care of itself. Does it feel easy or harder to start a test? 
probably start. <laughs> it can get a little bit nerve-wracking coming on with sort of, you know, 15, 20, 10 to go and it's and the game's in the balance. And, yeah, I think uh, starting, you sort of work your way into the game a little bit more. Hey, Jake, I'm curious as to how much you trained with Bernard sort of outside you in training leading up into that test and how you think that combination went. Uh, yeah, I love playing with Nadi. We obviously played you know, 16, 17, 18 together at the Tars. Um, so very pretty familiar with each other. Um, and, you know, we trained uh, during that break leading into uh, the All Black series. So we're, we're pretty comfy with each other. There's not uh, too much teething going on there. It's uh, a familiar voice. Has Noah been training and up and about the training after his concussion a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, he's back up and training now, yeah. Um, and you guys will have Raynal again, the ref as an assistant referee. How does the group feel about that? Um, oh, look, you know, we're obviously really disappointed with how, how the game finished. Um, but, you know, we, ne- we really need to control uh, what we can there. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter that he's going to be a touchy. We need to focus on our game. And, you know, if we play uh, well for the 80 minutes, I'm sure we'll get a good result. Um, obviously, oh, sorry, Tom, you keep going. I was going to say lastly, Jay, is it important for the group to get over what happened or, or is there a value in trying to channel that frustration into a, a bigger... Oh, I definitely think there's... Yeah, we need to channel that frustration. Uh, it's pretty clear that we're all bitterly disappointed by how that result finished. Um, but, yeah, we've got to channel it in the right way. It's important. Jack, um, obviously there's three of you in that position, only two get picked. Um, how how do you kind of guys work together? Are you rivals or do you have a team kind of attitude to it? Or how do you approach it as a, as a group of three into two? Oh, it looks pretty simple. They're both pretty good blokes, to be fair. So, oh, look, we train pretty hard when we're on the field together, but we have a laugh off the field. Now, I've got a great relationship with both of them. So, um, as competitive as they are, we can we get over that and we uh, we have a good laugh together. So, it's, yeah, it's all good. So, so what's it been like this season on those occasions when you drop out of the side? How do you kind of deal with that mindset-wise to keep yourself going and come back in? And is it frustrating or is it just kind of part of what you do? Oh, there's definitely an element of frustration. Uh, definitely in halfbacks, they're all competitive and we all want to play. So, yeah, I'd be lying here. I'd be, I'd be lying sitting here saying it's all good. Uh, you know, I know Tatey and Whitey and myself all want to start every game. So, uh, yeah, you know, the start of the week, there's probably an element of frustration with, within myself when I'm not getting picked. Then you've got to get over it and put the team first after that. And do you find you've developed any areas of your game in particular over the last 12 months or so? Oh, look, I think core, core job of halfback, kick and pass can always improve. So they're probably two things I'm always looking to uh, find an edge with. And just one more for me. What's it like, um, you know, previously you might have got to New Zealand a bit earlier as, as with several other tests this campaign. Like, do you think it's an advantage uh, or disadvantage or n- no difference at all to be going in quite late? Um, you know, especially with all the hype around playing at Eden Park. I think we're pretty familiar with New Zealand. We play there quite a lot, especially in Trans-Tasman. Uh, we play a number of tests there a year. So, uh, yeah, heading over there is pretty familiar. We know what we're getting ourselves into. We'll be ready to go. Thank you. Uh, Jared, just um, can, I, um, can I ask how it feels for you to be suiting up in a Wallabies jersey, Eden Park, and it doesn't get much bigger, eh? Me? Yeah, mate. Uh, yeah, mate. It's obviously, you know, Eden Park's well document, uh, documented and... Um, you know, just being a part of that test match last week, you know, my first one, and I was full of nerves, so it was good to get that out of the way, and yeah, I, I can't wait to to go over there and, um, you know, to be a part of it and hopefully have a huge impact on the game as well, and um, I know collectively as a team where we can't wait, and um, yeah, we're, uh, we're chewing at the bit to get over there and uh, perform on the weekend. What do you think last week's test says about the state of the rivalry? Because Australia hasn't been, you know, if I can put it crudely, you know, up there, like make a World Cup final last time round, you know, we're not in the, that bracket of elite teams expected to win the World Cup. But the combat between the trans tasman rivals feels as fierce as ever. Yeah, I think the rivalry is very healthy. Um, you know, they've been so dominant over the last 20 years. Um, yeah, well, right there, and the game was for the taking on the weekend. Uh, 
but it doesn't mean anything if, if we don't back it up this week and, and take a right to them again. Um, and we've struggled to back it up previously. So it's a huge cha challenge for this team and, and for us to, to go get a result this weekend. And um, as I said, you know, we're chewing at the bit. We've had a great week of prep and um, yeah, hopefully get over there and, and back it up. <clears throat> Australia can't win the Bledisloe, obviously, and it would take a miracle for us to win the rugby championship. Is there motivation in denying New Zealand the rugby championship? Oh, there's a huge amount of motivation, you know, just this weekend with Eden Park, obviously the record that they have there. Um, so there's motivation over that, motivation over the result on the past weekend. Um, and obviously, you know, it's not sort of taking away. We want to win every test match that we're a part of. So um, it's just going out there and performing and, and performing to, you know, the ability that we know we can. Uh, so. Yeah, as I said, there, there is a lot of motivation involved with this game. It's not necessarily based around stopping New Zealand from winning the Trans Tas uh, sorry, the Rugby Championship, but it's just about us performing and yeah, doing our best. Thank you. Um, Jed, just a quick one. Is, has there been more of an edge this week at training off the back of la last Thursday? And, and secondly, um, from your perspective, how does the Wallabies get off to quicker starts? Uh, Mate, there has been. We've have to, as Jake touched on, we had to really channel the sort of motivation throughout this week because it's definitely there. Boys are boys can't wait to to rip in, and we we're hurting, but we've we've used that as motivation, and um, yeah, we we had to challenge channel that um, and make sure that you know the the edge that we bring comes out on Saturday as opposed to you know Tuesday or Thursday at training. So. Um, we've done a good job of that this week and, and we're really excited. Um, but in, in terms of starting better, you know, looking back at that test match, I dropped two kickoffs. I've got to be better there and we put ourselves under the pump. They kicked to the corner more on us a couple of times. We give away a few advantages. So, you know, there's things like that we need to look at and, and be better at because what I'm starting to learn at test rugby kind of can't afford to give a team an inch because you know you're going to end up seven ten points down quite quickly um and that's kind of been the story of of our test matches you know all this year we're allowing teams to get a quick start so nullifying that quick start and and just being better individually anything else for jake or jed goes I was just going to ask, Jed, are you preparing to, with Rob Leota out, big back row cover or sort of possibly stay in that second row? Yeah, the, the beauty of, like, of what I can bring is I can cover, you know, four, five, six and potentially eight. Um, so I've got to be over my detail. Um, I'm absolutely gutted for Rob. Um, you know, he was having a, a really good impact on that test match and... Um, He's had a bit of a rough trot with injuries this year, and yeah, I'm I'm absolutely gutted for him. So I know he'll come back bigger and stronger, and and um, yeah, he'll he'll go through the whole injury process now. Um, but yeah, we're all thinking of Robbie.